Did you know that money printing rarely involves a physical printer? Wait, what? With no printers? How do governments create money? Well, money is mainly numbers on a computer screen. Where does it all come from? Governments generally print money in one of two ways. The first way is through debt monetization, and the second way is through quantitative easing. Do you expect me to know what that means? Oh, definitely not. These are words economists use to sound smart, so let me explain them. Debt monetization is a fancy way of turning debt into money. So governments print money with debt? That doesn't make any sense. OK, let's look at an example. Oi, I'm government and I have a spending problem. Hello, I'm the central bank and I have an unlimited supply of money. I, uh, can you spare any money? Uh, my supply is running low. Oh, sure thing. You have to promise to repay it all with interest. Look, you can take my word. Here's a certificate saying I'll pay it back within a certain amount of time. OK, great. You see, government just created debt and central bank buys that debt with money. Hold up, let me get this straight. So governments need money for its spending problem? Yeah. And central bank prints them up? Yeah. OK, so how much does government owe? Government's still here, you can ask. Hey, government, how much money do you owe? About $29 trillion. Wow, you do have a spending problem. Yes. How do you plan on paying all that back? Yes. What? That didn't answer my question. Yes. Don't you have a plan? Maybe. Central Bank, why are you enabling government spending problem? Well, I'm just here to make the economy grow forever. If the economy grows forever, then I look like I'm doing my job. Can the economy grow forever? Well, no, it can't. Nothing can grow forever. Yes, it can. Look at it. That's the illusion of growth. No. Yes, the economy looks like it's growing because you inject more money into the system. Impossible. This is a mess. So the entire process of debt monetization is giving the government money to finance its spending? Correct. Now let's get into the other half, quantitative easing. Despite the name, it's just a fancy way of referring to central banks purchasing debt from non-government institutions. So central bank prints money out of thin air and buy debt with it? Yeah, let me explain further. Now, central bank is still here with the money printer and there are a few more characters involved. Commercial bank, retail bank, and investment bank. Do people use these banks? People like you and me are their customers. Companies also use these banks. This is a pyramid with central banks at the top, regular banks in the middle, and people like me at the bottom. Exactly. In a healthy economy, money will transfer throughout this pyramid. Central banks can send money to the regular banks. The regular banks can transfer and borrow money between themselves. And people like you can use these banks to borrow, save, or invest. People can spend on the products and services companies provide as well. The companies will reinvest profits back into banks. OK, that's great and all, but what does it have to do with quantitative easing? Economists believe that economic growth happens when money flows freely through the system. So, say a blockage occurs and the flow of money slows. Central bank will use quantitative easing to fix it. What causes a blockage? Widespread fear. People borrowing money from banks or buying products from companies becomes risky. They want to save it. If people are not spending money on products, companies will also lose profits or go bankrupt. Fear also happens between the regular banks. They will stop lending to each other due to the risk of not getting their money back. So fear can slow the economy and central bank doesn't like that. Fear, bad. Growth, good. Injecting more money into the economy gets it going again. How are you going to inject this money into the economy? I have two weapons at my disposal, lowering interest rates or buying assets. So what are you going to choose? Well, I have already lowered interest rates as much as possible, so that solution isn't working as well as planned. The only option we have now is to buy assets. And when the central bank buys these assets, regular banks will have more money. In return, these banks will be willing to loan out money to their customers at cheaper rates. He's right. We hope my printing increases the flow of money in the system and promotes economic growth. If you're printing money and buying assets from banks, why not call it printing money? Because printing money is the last option empires revert to before collapsing, and Central Bank doesn't want to admit this is their only option. That, that's not true. My economic models say different. Look at history. All manipulated financial systems end up failing. This is no different. 
Injecting loads of money in a system for the sole reason of growth is manipulation. I will fix this manipulated economy by manipulating it even more. Okay, okay, I think I get it now. Our central bank prints money digitally by purchasing debt from sellers. If they didn't do this, the economy would do poorly. Yes, but don't forget the unintended consequences of printing money. First, it is making the debt problem much worse for a later date. Second, printing money causes inflation. Is inflation bad? I covered that in another video. Click the end screen to check it out.